Welcome back to my channel. My name is Lucy and I share videos on the topic of long COVID, chronic fatigue syndrome and mind-body approaches that can be used to help those conditions and other mind-body conditions. Today's video I'm really excited about. It's a little bit of a different video. I am talking with Heidi about her recovery from long COVID and migraines and chronic aura. Heidi is a doctor living in Norway and she has a really inspiring story and I'm really looking forward to sharing this and for people to see how well the mind-body approach worked for her. I also want to say at the beginning that this approach is different for different people and different people find different tools helpful different people need to go at a different speed to others and there are many differences individual differences in using this approach so this video is not advice it's not medical or mental health advice Heidi is not speaking from the perspective of a doctor she is speaking about her own personal experience of being unwell so let's get into Heidi's story. So welcome Heidi, thank you so much for joining and sharing your story. I think it's really, it's really helpful for people who are in that phase of recovery and looking for some hope and inspiration, I think, to hear stories like this. So yeah, I'm really excited for people to watch it. Me, me too I can 100% relate and that's that's actually how I found your story um, on YouTube is by googling recovery stories because I was so desperate to get any story that wasn't the doom and gloom that has filled the internet when it when you google long COVID. Yeah yeah and funny enough it was similar for me as well before I had a big change in my recovery I'd come across a recovery story that I found very inspirational so yeah. The effect is trickling along. So I know that you, as well as having long COVID, you also had issues with chronic migraines before that. So if you want to tell us a bit about how it all started, maybe going back to the migraines. Yeah, so so um, I was in a really uh, busy period at work where we were having to work extra and yeah very very busy at work and I'd um and I got this cluster of migraines where I usually get one two a year if I'm really sleep deprived and I got a cluster of migraines where I had three I think in this three long ones in the space of a couple of weeks and then the last one I got I went to work with the migraine which in hindsight I shouldn't have done but the last one I got became chronic but it was just the aura you know the visual disturbance you get before the headache it was that but the headache never never turned up so that started December 21 and I that really impaired my or what would you say it really it meant that I couldn't work because it was very triggered and worsened by the strong blue lights um, and I work in the hospital so you, 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 there's no escaping the strong white hospital lights the blue end of the spectrum and um, so I struggled for months on and off seeing specialists and trying to get back to work trying different different things like contact lenses and screen glasses and new computer screen everything I could to try and get back to work for more than an hour or two that I could tolerate the lights and then eventually uh there's no there's this is such a rare thing with the chronic aura it's very well known but rare so eventually I decided to stop treatment on the or to stop trying treatments that weren't working on the um uh on the advice of my neurologist and just take time off and see if it would fizzle out on its own because the more I kept trying to go back to work, the more it flared up. And when I stayed in natural lighting, it, it gradually fizzled out. So I took a year, a leave of absence from work and, and took a year off and decided to go traveling and just not be the patient anymore. This was 
after nine or 10 months of nonstop <laughs> trying and failing to get back to work. Um, and at this point, my aura had trickled down so much that I could, or fizzled out enough that I could have totally normal quality of light, quality of life in normal daylight with glasses on. Um, so I was, I went away traveling for three months, backpacking on my own in South America. And that was fantastic, highly recommend. Um, and came home for Christmas and got COVID which then turned into long COVID. So I was just home for a few weeks for a break and then had a plan to go, to go out again and finish my year of traveling. Um, but never, never quite got that far. I did eventually, but that's a spoiler alert. So then you got long COVID that Christmas of 2021, was it? Yeah, 21, 22. So it was January last year, a year ago now. And so what was that like for you? How how was that experience? Well, at first I didn't know it was COVID. Um, before, there was a lot of COVID around me, but I didn't really, didn't, we weren't really testing. We just stopped testing at that point. So it was just a, a bad cold that then lasted for a week and then two weeks. And then I went to the doctor and I said, look, I'm not I'm still as unwell as I was the first few days. Um, and then they agreed that they took blood tests and they agreed that this was just post-viral fatigue, um, like long COVID and decided at that point, I didn't know much about it, but I, I know about chronic fatigue and ME from before. And that's, I've always thought that would be my nightmare to have that because you're just completely stopped in your tracks and you can't do anything that you want to do. So. So it was in the back of my head already that that was my nightmare. Um, so I was immediately a bit anxious about it because I'd heard about long COVID as well. So I knew it could last a long time. You know, you hear it in the news, the people who had had it for two, two plus years at that point already. Um, but I just rested a lot my GP told me to do active resting. So I did some meditation and sat down and, you know, didn't look at my phone or watch TV for rest. I properly tried to switch off. Um, and then eventually got better after a few weeks. So then I started to exercise again very slowly, um, a little bit at a time. And then after about a couple of months, I yeah, maybe three months in total what, after I'd built up the exercise again, I thought I was completely better. I declared myself cured from long COVID. And I suppose I didn't really buy that I had it. I thought I just had COVID that lasted a bit longer, which I'd also heard about. So then went back to full, full exercising again, skiing and then circuit training. It, in the same day to try and get fit again. I was very active before. So, so the six weeks that I sat on the sofa was awful. I hated it, obviously like anyone would, but I was really looking forward to start exercising again. So I went, probably went a bit too hard on the exercise and then I crashed again. <coughs> and I got, it got a second round and then eventually a third, third wave of long COVID. So mine, mine was, which I didn't know about before, but I, eventually when I started reading a lot more about it in the second wave of long COVID, I read that that was quite common. Some people had it intermittently or kind of fluctuating um, in waves. So that's definitely why I had. Yeah, I've heard quite a few instances where people have... <laughs> recovered and and maybe even felt like they fully recovered and then unfortunately relapse um yeah. and I think it can it can be really easy to go into that mindset of oh I'm better now like back to sport back to the usual routine and of course it's very disappointing and hard then to experience becoming unwell again and I'm realizing that it's not all over yeah yeah, that was a huge shock and a disappointment. And yeah, the emotional roller coaster 
that comes with the long COVID roller coaster is extreme. It's, yeah, it feels like it's totally out of your control. Yeah. And, and what was it like for you then? So after that crash physically, what was it like for you living with long COVID? What sort of capacity did you have? It, it felt like I had a flu or a fever. I had body aches and just no energy. Um, I didn't have a fever, uh, obviously, but it, <clears throat> but I, it felt that way. So I couldn't shower. If I showered, I was exhausted for the rest of the day. So <clears throat> couldn't make my own food. I was living at home with my mom at that point, and she, I was completely reliant on her to make food for me. Um, so it was just, I sat on the couch and couldn't do much else. So it was, it was, it was you know, I wasn't in bed. I could socialize and I could talk, but I did have, I was exhausted both physically and mentally. Um, and then the, I got the dizziness, the postural dizziness and the, yeah, the POTS side of things with the feeling really dizzy when I sat up and stood up and heat intolerance that all kind of escalated during my second relapse and what was going through your mind at this time in terms of what you could try to recover or did you try anything in the hope that it would help at that time I found at that time like I think a lot of people probably can relate to that my GP really didn't know what to say so I didn't really get much advice from her at the time. Um, yeah, I can't even, I don't think she said anything. She kind of just said, rest, active rest and try to do small periods of activity and then give it time. Yep. But at that point I'm thinking there's, there must be something. And I was, it was hard to, to do the research because it, it, it's a minefield when you Google long COVID and, the studies that are good quality that it's a very heavy to read and trying to understand them when you're especially when you've got brain fog and you're exhausted and you're told that you need to mentally rest as well I remember thinking that was hard because in the beginning I thought oh oh well I can't do anything physically but maybe I can learn French or do study or do something else useful but then I read no you need to rest your mind as well so then I thought well I'm literally just supposed to sit here and do nothing um I came across a YouTube channel by a guy called Gez Medinger um who summarizes he talks to a lot of experts who are studying long COVID and summarizes the new findings and research which I found very helpful so I just set out to learn as much as I could about long COVID um, and that's quite overwhelming because you learn everything that's wrong with you. All the theories you learn about the dysautonomia and that your immune system's gone haywire and your nervous system's gone haywire and that you've got microclots in your, in your muscles and that your cell powerhouses aren't working. Everything you read is like, oh my God, my body's just gone into total panic. And it just makes you feel even more helpless. Um, but I suppose the first thing I found that really helped, I, I tried all the vitamins, the weird and wonderful supplements that I thought I, got, I kind of went for the mindset of whatever doesn't harm me is worth a, worth a go. I mean, if it doesn't hurt, then why not? And um, was very open to trying anything. But the first thing I found that really helped was breath work. Um, on his channel, Gez uh, Medinger talked about coherence breathing and that, how that could help calm your autonomic nervous system, your fight or flight mode. Um, and I really started to notice that that was helping after a week or two, maybe of doing that consistently every day for an hour or two every day, it, my heart rate was a bit less erratic and I could stand for longer periods. So then that was the first thing that that started to help. I was going to say when you were talking about thinking about, you know, how you could use this time productively whilst you're unwell and not able to physically do things is very relatable. I'd say for a lot of people, <laughs> I remember when I was unwell thinking, 
oh, well, my goal for this year can be how many books will I listen to? You know, yeah. it's funny how our mindset can quickly go into an a- achiever state of like, what else can I achieve or can I yeah. do during this time? Mm-hmm. But also really relatable what you say about searching for answers uh, about long COVID and yeah. looking at who's talking about the research and there is a lot of information out there but it can be quite overwhelming and also difficult sometimes to, to think about all of these potential things that are wrong with yeah the body. and and it's so conflicting one there's one school of thought that says you should push through and just exercise do some sort of exercise three times a day no matter how fatigued you feel and then the other the other bigger school of thought that kind of took over is pacing 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 never use up all your energy never overdo it so that's the route I eventually took and I got quite obsessed about pacing because it's impossible to do well because the the fatigue and long COVID is so unpredictable and your your energy envelope changes every day so that became I became a bit obsessed with trying to get good at pacing and also frustrated at every time I crashed and I say crashed because that's what I said at that time but I've since learned of course that it's not helpful to use terminology like that yeah I I've heard a lot about people trying to pace and I remember when I was trying to pace thinking you know oh I just can't get it right enough or I can't do this you know like becoming kind of obsessed with the micro detail of the pacing and kind of trying to understand well why am I not starting to feel a bit better or why am I feeling worse even though I'm managing my energy in this way and yeah it becomes really small detail especially when you're so unwell that you know um preparing food or taking a shower or doing some of those really basic tasks are yeah. integrated into the pacing and and you have very little energy yeah and then you start questioning yourself and that you you're always thinking oh what have I done wrong I don't even understand why I've crashed now because yeah you're always analyzing what you've done wrong and that just fuels into the whole the, what the conditioning that I've since learned that I was unintentionally doing so you, I think oh it's because I washed my hair usually I had to separate I had to sit down and wash my hair and then shower my body separately with breaks in between but at that point yeah I would blame it on myself because I washed my hair and showered at the same time so then I thought okay well I can't do that again yeah and yeah then- it, it becomes really self we we can end up criticizing ourselves or it becomes like there's such tight margins in terms of what we can do right and wrong and it's it feels like we've got so much responsibility over the tiniest of movements how much we exert ourselves or how little we exert ourselves and the impact that has so in terms of then what um what did help you what what was it that 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 helped you with your recovery well I had a few things that I thought helped at the time to calm down the the sympathetic overdrive, my pot symptoms. Like I think the two things I definitely noticed a difference from were um, were acupuncture um, and the breath work. But yeah. the thing that helped me, but I still got worse despite doing this. And then I kept going with the acupuncture and it just didn't, it helped settle the, my heart rate, the erratic heart rate a little bit, but, but the thing that got me fully recovered was, was finding your channel. And, um, so I came across, I was actually, it was at a time where I was in my third crash. I just canceled my, my trip to the States and Japan, which I thought I was well enough to then do. And so back, at square one again and even worse and then my mom who I was living with at the time she she got COVID and I just panicked I thought oh I've got it again now and then I'm going to get a lot worse and then I'll be in bed for three years 
you know, there was just, so I was Googling and there's just no good news about getting COVID when you've got long COVID already. So I was, so that's when I, in desperation, I said, there must be a recovery story. So that's when I found your channel. And then you, I watched your first video about your recovery story, not your first video, but the first one I watched was you summarizing and you talked about um, John Sarno's book, The Mind-Body Connection or The Mind-Body Prescription. Yeah. So I just, I downloaded that and list, binge listened to it on audiobook the, the, that day. And I was, I, that was the turning point for me, like you said it was for you, because I just recognized myself in all of what he described. And I thought, I thought this, I completely buy into this. Um, so then I totally changed my tactic from pacing to just trying to push through and yeah, turn the, the pacing theory completely upside down. And then I watched all your videos on your YouTube channel, all the ones you'd made, which, which really helped take it to the next level because John Sarno, he, he talks about back pain mainly. He mentions fatigue, but he, he doesn't really explain much in that book how to go about changing your mindset. And that's what your channel was, was great for. You knew every, it's like you were reading my mind. You knew the pitfalls and the, and the thought patterns that I was falling into. And so, so yeah. Just a quick question there. So when you say, um, when you say push through, what do you, what do you mean by that? Or what do you mean by stopping pacing? And, and what was your strategy moving forward during that phase of starting to increase activity? So previously I'd done very little and, and I'd have a crash and I tried to think what's, why am I feeling worse? What have I done? And then I would try to do even less the next day, but that was basic self-care and making myself a sandwich that's the limit so then and I didn't want to start the next level of things to do before I'd manage the first level without getting worse so then when I read the book I decided okay I'm going to do the things that I think I'm not ready for and just keep reminding myself that I'm I'm my body's healthy there's no reason that I'm I should crash now it's I'm just predicting my crashes I've conditioned myself to think I'm still sick but I'm probably not as sick as I think I am so I I made myself a proper meal for the first time in two months and I went out to the shop and did some errands and at this time I was still I had the body aches the fatigue I was breathless and usually that would make me panic and think oh I've overdone it I need to stop but at that time, I just kept taking breaks just to kind of remind myself, I'm fine. I'm healthy. Don't panic because that's what's going to cause you to crash. There's no reason to think that I'm going to crash. And that first day, the second day after reading the book is when I had my first session with you. So, yeah, and that got me going. And then I, I increased so fast. I went from making food and doing errands the very first day from being in bed and not having showered in two days to doing that and then the next day I went out for a walk and I did yoga gentle yoga but I mean I had muscle aches from the from the exercise that was the 20 minute walk and the gentle relaxation yoga and then I yeah I increased from there I did longer walks and then the week after I went traveling again, <laughs> I went to a yoga retreat and surfing, which yeah. is just, it's still mind boggling to think about. I, I never, I never expected that was possible. It literally melted away and the, the fatigue and the palpitations and the breathlessness that had, that was gone within, well, the fatigue and muscle aches was gone within two days. And then the palpitations, they lasted about a week. And I had to keep telling myself, you know, pointing out the inconsistencies. Why have I got palpitations now? But I didn't yesterday when I did a more strenuous activity. So, <coughs> and I think that was also, the palpitations was probably my body getting used to, <coughs> excuse me, 
getting used to the activity again. I mean, I'd been horizontal for two months. So yeah. I just kept telling myself, this isn't, this isn't long COVID. This is just my body readjusting, which is totally normal. It doesn't mean I'm not healthy. It just means, <clears throat> yeah, it's an adjustment. Yeah. Yeah, I remember getting an email from you um, saying you were you were heading off on a yoga retreat only a week yeah. after your session, oh. and I yeah. was um, I was I was excited for you that that you know that that was possible um, so <laughs> quickly, and I think it's you know it's it's amazing how quickly some of these transformations can can be, and and really the the trust and the belief in the approach and in knowing that our bodies are okay <laughs> and we are safe in doing activity the power that that can yeah. be. in terms of your your journey following the mind body approach and continuing on with that what what did that look like for you and did you experience any challenges throughout <laughs> that period of time um, so the, because I recovered so quickly from the long COVID, just I still I can't even believe I'm saying it now that I'm saying it again. Um, that part actually went really smoothly that I had doubt in the beginning and I was as I was increasing exercise, but that melted away quite quickly as I continually proved to myself that if I if if I was unwell, I wouldn't be able to to get better this quickly if it it just proves that it's um a mind body thing when it can get better that quickly and then and I'd already signed up to 12 weeks of what yeah 12 weeks of sessions with you but that worked out really well because I decided to use the mind body approach on my migraine aura as well um and so we've continued the sessions with with that and it's it's actually worked really well for the migraines as well so I yeah the doubt creeps in but then the more you s notice the inconsistencies and you see that it it improves when you apply these approaches that we've discussed the more you convince yourself um that it, this is it is a mind body um condition and yeah i i think building <clears throat> is really yeah. helpful as you go along the more evidence you have the easier it is to to say to yourself actually this does work i have so much evidence already and that can help a lot with the trusting in the approach and feeling safe that you are okay with different triggers and so in terms of your aura and your migraine um, I know you mentioned that lights were a trigger for you. So I suppose that's a bit different to the triggers around long COVID like activity. So how how did you go about managing managing that trigger or using the mind body approach with a different, um, I suppose, condition or uh, symptom? Yeah, I suppose I had a little bit more doubt about the migraines going into it than I did about long COVID. So the doubt was there. I wasn't as convinced about the migraines, but there was definitely enough about it that that convinced me that this is definitely worth a try. I mean, there's whether it's mind body solely, whether it's only a mind body syndrome. I'm still not convinced about I'm, I mean there's definitely a genetic component and <clears throat> yeah but I think I could definitely make sense of the conditioning because I spent so long no nobody knew this condition well enough to tell me how to handle it so just like the long COVID with a lack of guidance or knowledge about it I had to figure out myself okay what makes it worse what makes it better and was very Hyper vigilant about that so I could definitely see that I'd been conditioning myself to expect the worsening of the aura in certain lightings and I would always notice the lighting it was just at the forefront of my mind so so um yeah I just worked 
with you to kind of to kind of identify the thought patterns and the fear that was coming up for me when I started work again, which was in November. And yeah, work, worked with worked on those as they came up. And some days I felt great and very confident. And other days something would come up that was unexpected. And that's when it was really helpful to have the sessions with you. And because it was harder, it's more helpful to to handle it as it came up. So after I started work, it was harder to talk much about it before I went back to work. Yeah. So I met you the month, just over a month before I went back to work. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's often the case. You know, there are new challenges that arise. And especially when you're in that phase of challenging the symptom by going into a triggering situation which for you was the bright lights at work and also yeah. dealing with um going back to work in and of itself aside from other triggers can be challenging in terms of getting used to new stresses and I mean there's stresses you've experienced before but you know stresses that might challenge us in different ways have you reflected much on any personality traits that may have had a role in terms of the long COVID or the migraines in the first place and that in relation to work? Yeah, absolutely. I, I have the perfectionism personality trait, which is, which is funny because I would have denied that. I would have never called myself a perfectionist, but in but of course I am. I don't expect every little thing to be perfect, but I expect very high standards of myself. And I also have this people-pleasing thing, which I didn't either identify as people-pleasing, but it is. But I, I just have this need that I don't even, it's not even conscious to, to say yes. I just say yes to everything. So I'm the yes person at work. And by being the yes person, people ask you first. And I don't even consider whether it's too much before I say yes. And I'm still doing that. And I catch myself out. And it still, it still blows my mind that I'm, it's so ingrained in me that I don't notice until after I've said yes that that's too much too soon. And I, yeah, I struggle to restrict myself. So, and so the high achieving that, people pleasing, the perfectionism, the the hypervigilance, that came into both my migraines and my long COVID of really tracking my symptoms, trying to figure it out, trying to outsmart both long COVID and migraines, which I think is a very good personality traits in some ways, and especially if you're hypervigilant about a health problem that you need to be, but it, you can also see that it fuels adds fuel to the fire because you're if you're hyper vigilant about all, all your symptoms and behaviors that that's what's conditioning you to think that you're still unwell and to predict your your crashes yeah for sure and and I think also it's it's interesting what you say about you know the perfectionism and the people pleasing and how those can be something that we have to work on on an ongoing basis even after yeah. symptoms have reduced so that we don't completely ignore our inner experience or signals and and also I think being well means being able to do a lot again but we are all human as well so we do have limits in terms of the amounts of uh, the amount of hours in a day or a week that we can work without i suppose burning out it, it's very good for us to have that balance where we can have time to relax time to do other enjoyable activities as well yeah yeah it's it's definitely been really interesting to learn about my personality and also with the internal family systems, learning about the different parts of me that are often conflicting. And I've just found it really interesting and it keeps coming up and it's helped me understand myself better and my relationships with family and friends better because when I boil it down to internal family systems, that just, it makes perfect sense to me. 
And I know it, that doesn't work for everyone. I have one of my best friends. She just thinks it's rubbish that does, it, she doesn't relate to having an inner child, but she's she she thinks about it in a different way that works for her. Yeah, and also I a big a big thing for me has been identifying my limits and ac accepting that I have limits and I can't do everything because I would I don't think I fully accepted that before. And so that's one step, but then actually applying the brakes and being able to, I, I found that I, I'm not scared of saying, saying no to things. I, I'm not really worried about having to say, no, I can't do that. I don't find that difficult. It's just me knowing myself when it's too much for me. That I'm not good at. And that has been a working work in pro progress. And it will be for a while because I keep falling into that trap. Trap, but now I notice it when I do it. Often afterwards, but yeah, it's yeah, the work in progress. Well, that's I, I think the awareness is really the first step, and it takes a while. And I think also it's sometimes it's not identifying within us what our needs or are, and also I think sometimes. We don't realize that something was too much until after the fact as well. Yeah. We might feel quite good yeah. and energetic and optimistic. And sometimes naturally that's um, our attitude in life and what we want. And therefore we say yes to more things. And so I suppose it's learning, learning through experience and being aware of these things going forward. So yeah. So how has your life been generally since going back to work and um, and and since, I suppose, all of this process began? Well, I mean, my life, my quality of life changed on the day when I found your channel. Because um, I, I was certain that for months and months ahead, if not years, I'd be gradually pacing and increasing and hope to get back to daily life but exercise was never even close to being an option so by day two when I was doing exercise that was just completely unexpected and fantastic so it's been I mean it's still been a roller coaster because it's a learning process and it's it, there's been ups and downs but it's totally different than the roller coaster that I was on before with long COVID where I had no control I was just blindly trying and failing and didn't know why um yeah so it's it's changed for the positive absolutely and and I think the the rest of my life has changed I think these skills that I'm learning and have learned will pay off and help me for the rest of my life and whatever challenges that I face next yeah, it's it's lovely to hear that. And I, and I think it's I feel similarly in terms of learning this work. It, it makes me feel like actually. Having these skills and even if I need to learn more along my journey or if I get a new symptom again, there will be a there'll be a way to figure yeah. it out and there'll be a way to move forward. And, and I think having more self-awareness in general is such a positive thing um yeah it helps it helps in many areas of life as well as recovery yeah yeah absolutely and I've seen that already and and I'm I'm so excited to be back to work I didn't I'm working full-time already and I didn't I didn't know if that was going to be possible either because I still have the aura although very very mild and less and less to be honest so I think I think knock on wood that it's going to go away fully it's just yeah taking a bit longer than the than the long covid but um yeah it's gone above and beyond all expectations and um yeah and now i'm just trying to figure out how to pay it forward how to help um other people realize the same thing and recover from different ailments be it long covid or other chronic chronic symptoms so so that's my big, my big mission now. And I suppose doing this interview is probably the first, the first little step because I'm hoping someone else Googles recovery story or 
comes across this and it feels inspired by how transformative this was for me. I would have, uh, I mean, it's not going to be an overnight change for everyone, but the fact that it can, can be, and it was for me is, I think, yeah, mind boggling and hopefully inspirational. Yeah, definitely inspirational. I, I find your story so inspirational. And I think it's amazing that you're also wanting to pay it forward and wanting to think about how you can help others with these conditions, because there's so many mind body conditions out there. And having the having yeah. access to information or people who who understand these conditions is so important hopefully with time more and more people will come across this approach more easily without having yeah. to. you it's, know it's a shame it's a shame that there's so much <coughs> excuse me it's a shame that there's so much resistance to it because it's so once you've you've seen it and your eyes are open to it. I see it everywhere. You know, I just want to diagnose everyone with mind body conditions and tell them what can help. But I think there's definitely is a timing element involved. You need to be open to receiving this idea and, and to learning about it. And I think, I do wonder if I'd seen your video or read John Sarno's book earlier, would I have been as open to it? I think if I'd read it, I would have understood it straight away, but would I even have read a book about back pain yeah. um, six months earlier? I doubt it. I would yeah. have just rejected it myself so I can, I can relate. Um, you just have to pick the right moment to try and introduce the idea to people. Yeah, it's such a good point. And I think it's, it's so, so many of us have been there in that position where we weren't in the right mind frame to 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 be open to the idea of a mind body approach and also I think it's really about understanding it fully because some people yeah. interpret that that you know the symptoms are in their mind or made up in some way or that they're not real and I think that's it's so important that people who are interested in this approach know that no one is saying their symptoms are not real or yeah. very physical and debilitating in in how they how they present yeah yeah definitely it's a hard subject to introduce and to explain um quickly or with limited time that's something i need to learn or i think it's very difficult that's why i think learning about it for the first time via john sarno's book was helpful because it's very systematic about how he puts it puts puts it forward so I tried to explain my, I mean my family saw my transformation and my recovery and so then they they tried their best to understand and I tried my best to explain but it wasn't until my brother read John Sarno's book himself a few weeks ago that he was like wow now I get it I, I thought I understood it but I didn't really understand it until he read it himself so I think it, it was uh, but I think that on its own, I wouldn't have recovered from my migraine aura without having combining it with the sessions with you, because your sessions take it to the next level of uh, applying the, yeah, applying the mind body approach. And that's, that's been invaluable as well. Yeah, well, I'm glad the sessions have been helpful. And I suppose it is that element of having support that can be so helpful, especially when a challenge comes up, because when you're when you've read a book and you're on your own trying to apply it, there just naturally is more more challenge involved and, and more doubt because you're you're doing it on your own. Um, so when you have someone to support and guide and, and answer questions and, and all of that is it can it can help a lot. Is there anything else that you'd like to share, Heidi? Not that I can think of. I mean, we've we've talked about the amazing recovery and yeah. and learning about long COVID, and now I'm actually I actually have COVID again. Oh gosh, I got, I've had it for it's day ten. Not that I'm counting, but I'm I still feel I still <laughs> feel quite fatigued. Um. 
And so now it's really interesting actually being back to square one, literally feeling exactly the same as I did last January and comparing the two and approaching approaching it with totally new eyes. And I feel the doubt, I feel the doubt trying to creep in, but I've got the tools now to to just to handle it. And I yeah, it's interesting to see how part of me wants to start thinking yeah. I've got long COVID again and the other part is the voice of reason <laughs> of you and John Sarno so <laughs> yeah I'll keep you I'll keep you posted on how that journey goes yeah it's really it's really interesting how you talk about your mindset now having COVID compared to the first time or when you had long COVID in the initial phases because I also had COVID recently and so it's in, it, it's natural that that doubt will start to creep in um, yeah. and it's natural to feel a bit fearful because of our past experiences with those symptoms that are so debilitating but it's really nice also to hear that you've been managing really well with it and that it's been very a very different way of managing in terms of your mindset. Yeah I think the next part which is interesting is things that aren't they're not either mind body or you know disease illness pathology so you know some things are you know like chronic pain you often start with an actual injury that then becomes chronic and it's where do you draw that line when when does your mind take over after the actual insult has healed or the the damage has healed so so that's what I'm playing with now I am sick I have an awful cough and I have COVID so I have every right to feel rubbish but where's the line when do I how do I know when it's in my mind and when to just try and push through with the mind-body approach and and how long do I keep resting for and allow my body to heal so that's that's going to be an interesting yeah, an interesting thing to navigate navigate the next week or, week or a few days because, yeah, that's a tricky one, I think. Yeah, and, and I think it's difficult because you, you know, you do need to rest when you have a current infection and yeah. you need to allow your body to, to fight that infection and <laughs> when you still have a cough and, and whatever else in terms of symptoms, it's it could well be that still that current infection that your body is fighting off but I I have yeah. no doubt that you'll you'll manage you'll get through this well and, <laughs> and 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 I know how how great your mindset has been as well in understanding and applying the, the mind-body approach and and even being aware of that that that's that there's a line somewhere and and you're figuring yeah. out where it is it's it's good to have that awareness yeah yeah there's no clear answer it's a gray zone but I mean life's full of gray zones it's not very black and white is it so I'll figure it out as I go along yeah well thank you thank you so much Heidi for for sharing your story and I I know that a lot of people will appreciate having the chance to listen to your story thank you very much and and thank you for for giving my quality of life back and helping me heal my long COVID. It's, I can't thank you enough. And I tell everyone, uh, spread the word and I tell everyone I can about you. So I, yeah, I hope that this video helps someone else get on the, get on the right track yeah. to recover. Well, it's been a, it's been a pleasure helping you and yeah, it's just so nice to see such a, such a great transformation and uh, yeah see you back at work doing what you love doing as well yeah yeah it's been great thank you